Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of year. We are reacting to all 200cc CTGP records. And that is the name of the channel that uploaded this incredible video, editing it all together and giving information on how much each world record has been improved by year to year. So be sure to subscribe to 200cc CTGP records to stay up to date with all of the newest records that are happening. These records are getting broken left and right. Almost every single one of them was improved from last year. So we have a lot of new strats in store for us and just polished lines on the 200cc time trial leaderboard. Even Luigi's circuit was improved barely. So I don't really know how much more this track can go down. It looks practically perfect, just like the 150cc Luigi circuit world record. I didn't check for chain wheelies, but look at those shortcuts. Unbelievable. So Luigi circuit, one down, 31 to go, and we will be reviewing the glitch and no glitch categories. 15 second laps, look at the consistency and yeah, I mean, it's just gonna be so amazing having this extra feature added. Look at this, time cut off last year's world record, 0.235 by Casey, and even has the date when the record is set. I mean, this is incredible. These are literally my favorite videos to make because like, I am doing a 200cc knockout tournament right now, and at the time recording this, the invitational has not happened, so I'm gonna get to like learn so many strats, shortcuts, and just the optimal way to play each track most of them will be with the mock bike too, so it's just good to be able to download all of this information before we go into the knockout tournament where there will be a lot of Nintendo tracks in the mix. Moo Meadows, I didn't realize you can even get the low trick. I always trick off the ramp and go over the grass mound, but being able to do the low trick, that changes everything. I might have to learn that. It looks really fast. I mean, this world record for a track that is unbelievably short, under one minute, got improved by 0.235 and last lap there is no low trick. The low trick is probably quite a bit more difficult than it is on 150 and it's already difficult on 150. Look how much time it saves. That's almost 0.4 difference between, difference between lap two and lap three just because of the low trick. Otherwise the laps look relatively the same. So this is already very interesting. All right, we're gonna still watch the records again that haven't been changed from last year because I've only seen them all once so it's good to get a refresher and this is Mushroom Gorge glitch while, you know, we're so used to seeing the 150cc record, which is even faster than this. I mean, I think like the 150cc record is like 19 seconds or something. So we're not gonna be seeing the 200cc record defeating that because, I mean, it's just not really any faster to be able to play this on 200cc when you're just on a mountain the whole time. <laughs> 24 seconds, still insane. All right, and now we get to watch Mushroom Gorge no glitch it's fascinating because, you know, it's all about getting the fastest time. It doesn't matter how consistent the strategy is. So we'll always see things in these runs that blow our mind. Like this one is a half a second improvement and it's with Daisy. I really thought this would be a funky Kong world record. So first off, skipping the jump panel, taking the left route. We might see another jump panel skip in the cave. It's probably easier to do, no, no, going to the left. Oh, okay, okay, this is gonna be going down? What? What? I have never seen that. I wonder how difficult that is. Okay, I'm gonna try to download that lap two and three because that might be a safer strategy than what I do online because I do not like the gorge section on 200cc. It is terrifying. Let me watch this again. Wheelie off of that. Oh, that is incredible, and you skipped the last one. I don't know, it looks a little bit risky. Looks a little bit risky, but I'm tempted. And the thing is too, I don't think a lot of people are gonna take the left route online very often. People are gonna mostly go the right route, so that gives you free reign over that route where you'll be able to get the wheelie off the green mushroom and skip like three mushroom pads, as opposed to the other way where you have to deal with all the other players. You might even be able to get two item sets doing this strat. This is a really cool strategy. No wonder why the mushroom gorge record improved by half a second. I'm still surprised it's with Daisy over Funky Kong though. 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, so last lap was a little bit slower than the second lap, which was absolute domination. Okay, this is the exact same record as before. We have Boshi here from Canada, and once again we have Daisy Mockbike. In regular 150cc, 
we see Daisy Mock Bike maybe on like eight world records around there. And then on 200cc, there's gonna be more Daisy Mock than Funky Kong. But I am expecting to see over time more Funky Kong records happen just because even though Funky Kong Flame Runner is more difficult on 200, it's all about as going fast as possible. And even though it won't be better online on time trials, I can see a lot of tracks being better with Funky Kong. In fact, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of surprised this is not a Funky Kong Flame Runner track. None of these corners are difficult at Funky Kong. The only one is this corner right here. I could see this one being a little bit difficult, but like the rest of the track, you should be gaining time. And the shortcut might be tougher with Funky Kong as well because you get less air. But that is an extremely important shortcut to learn. Not just doing the shortcut, but doing it correctly. And that involves using the mushroom early and then drifting and then fast falling once you get enough air to clear the boundary. It always fascinated me how you can even land over there and it doesn't count you out of bounds anyway. So, Toad's Factory, gonna have to practice the shortcut because that saves so much more time than using the mushroom and trying to hold down, land in the tractor area, and then have to drift to the left to get back to the main road where you ultimately hit the, uh, you know, you hit the obstacles and end up in the mud a lot. That's how it goes for me. So, lap three was 0.4 slower than lap two. Probably something to do with the conveyor belts. It looked really solid. Also had to hold the first mini turbo when the stompers were going down at the beginning of lap three. But now we have <laughs> Mario Circuit with the bullet bike. I mean, this is a glitch run, so we're gonna be seeing probably the right tree being used. I'm predicting it's gonna be the right tree because then you don't you don't have to go into the tunnel backwards and charge a stance turbo. Probably this tree, yeah. Nice. I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, we do the Ultra Shortcut video where we have to play online 24 player but make it 200cc Ultra Shortcuts enabled instead of 150 because I think more Ultra Shortcuts would be possible and easier on 200cc. I'm not sure, I'd have to really think about all of them, but I, I could definitely see more shortcuts being pulled off. Look at that, seven second lap. This one. I'm guessing is easier on 200 than 150, but I don't know until I try. I've never tried this one on 200, I don't think. And now we have no glitch, of course, and it's Funky Kong Flame Runner. I'm a little surprised it's not the spear, to be honest. It just shows how unviable the spear is. Even a track that has no difficult corners whatsoever is a Funky Kong Flame Runner track. And that's a, that's a really, funny shortcut right there, the ramp shortcut, because there's just a sliver of regular road on the railing that separates the sand from the grass. And when you land in the sand portion on lap one, you're able to drift and then use the railing to get a little bit of air and skip the grass portion, which makes the shortcut faster. I'm curious to see if it'll be done on lap three, but still very impressive. And once again, like shouts to this channel because they even have the input viewer. If you're trying to practice 200cc, get better at it, that was so clean. Then you could just slow down the video to point zero, you know, point, point 0.25x and watch the inputs and learn how all of these strategies are done and practice them from there because that is so helpful for learning shortcuts, low trick strategies, and just the lines in general. So now we're on Coconut Mall and this is gonna be two seconds faster, two full seconds from last year. Oh my gosh, I was gonna pull up the website and try to do the math every single shortcut and figure out the time difference, but this video just tells me, which is beyond amazing. The 150cc glitch category for this track is absurd now. They don't even enter the mall to do the glitch, but now the 200cc world record is using the old strategy, along with this super glitchy 95% rule strategy where you actually go past the start line and then spin drift into the first checkpoint zone and then wrap around to the end to hit the last checkpoint. 27 seconds on Coconut Ball, what in the world? All right, so next, this is the shortcut category and it is gonna be from 2022. So this is probably one of the top five or so shortcuts in the entire probably in the entire game mode that has lasted over a year. Remember, like, this game mode came out in probably, I think it was 2019, January. So it's been five years of 200cc time trials, and this is cool, like, this is kind of a celebration right now of five years. That's a 
that, that, that's really cool to think about that people are still time trialing these tracks and these records are still getting beaten even though it's been, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a decent amount of time. Like the game mode has not died. It doesn't have an online option like CT Worldwides and currently Countdown do. I really wish it did though. Like I would play 200cc Worldwides all the time. I think 200cc is so much fun. I think it's a lot more fun playing at 12 player though than 24 player. 24 player 200cc is just chaos. <laughs> Worst knockout tournament idea ever. So this one, we know all these shortcuts. We've seen this one before. And the most important one for playing online is this one because it doesn't go through any key checkpoints backwards, so it's legal. But doing the one they do on lap two, lap three, skipping half of the mall, wrapping around, going backwards and turning around, that is illegal online and really, really useful for the speed runs. We used to speed run 200cc and we had to master that shortcut because it saves an an exorbitant amount of time. It is unbelievable how much time it saves. And now we have the standard run. So we watch the glitch, we watch the shortcut run, and now we're watching completely no glitch. Although I'm pretty sure they're still gonna do the shortcut at the end. So pretty much what it is is even though the last run did not skip any key checkpoints, it did go through one backwards, which always counts as shortcut category and banned online, while this one is just doing the regular shortcut that is legal, all legal online strategies for this run. And this is the one we have to pay the most attention to because it matters the most for lines. Daisy once again, it's all Daisy on Coconut Mall, and the shortcut is done streamless with a main turbo, which is really important because it's definitely harder to do shroomless. Like, it is not free shroomless. You gotta get a high trick, you gotta hold down, get more air, and you gotta get that main turbo off to compound it with the trick and boost panel boost to be able to maximize your height and your distance. And it's it's a lot, honestly. I don't really go for it shroomless, but it's not a bad idea because the, the penalty for missing it is not too bad. You probably lose about two seconds or so. And if you make it, you're gaining a second or two. So it's a pretty even risk versus reward. And with the mushroom, it's a no-brainer. That's a broken strategy. It's kind of similar to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe glider cut and how much it saves. This saves even a little bit more here because you're going through the last corner as well. All right, we are done with Coconut Mall at last and we have DK Summer. We have a 1.443 time save from last year's world record by Day E here from the USA. Unbelievable, okay. So the fact they're starting all the way to the right, we're gonna see the wraparound turn right here. And this does not skip any key checkpoints, so I believe this is the only category for DK Summit, which is crazy. And then we're gonna see no double shortcut lap one. I don't think we're gonna see the double shortcut at all, although theoretically it would be better to do like a Mythify This Style Mario Kart 8 Deluxe 200cc-esque double shortcut. I think that would be the way to go on this track after doing this shortcut. But this shortcut is a little bit luck-based, doesn't always work not super consistent and it spits you out in a position that gives you a lot of speed already with all the mounds, the trickable mounds. So I don't even know how much the double shortcut would really save. All right, we're seeing the first major error here on the run. Didn't get the last trick and went a little bit wide, but the shortcuts are perfect and where you land on the shortcut is imperative. If you land on top of mound, you're gonna lose a lot of time. But if you land to the side like that and get a low trick, that is unbelievably fast. Like this is done so fast that in order to do the double shortcut, you'd have to not get a mount trick and then slow down and then do a spin drift and then land perfectly and get to the half pipes to get your speed back. Like that lap three was insane. Let's see the lap times. Look at that. Lap two and three were actually the same, which is really fascinating. I thought for sure lap three would be faster. That's really shocking actually, I wonder why. Okay, so there's only one category for DK Summit. And now we have a record that has not been beaten. We got Ray who's had this record for a long time. And this is so cool, clipping off the post. I remember back in the day, someone found a way to do the 150cc glitch with the post, but it was actually like harder than even using the pipe for the ultra, So, and it wasn't faster. So it had no purpose whatsoever, but it's so cool to see the post actually have purpose. Kind of reminds me of like Sherbet Land for 150cc glitch. Like this is fascinating how this is the way to do it. I'd imagine it'd be really hard to do the pipe bounce on 200. You'd overshoot that pipe, and then even if you hit the pipe, you'd shoot up at a random angle with way too much speed. That was a great watch, 30 seconds. I think this is pretty similar, maybe like one second faster or something compared to the 150cc glitch category. It's very similar. 
And now we have Schmancy with a 0.365 cut. That's actually a decent amount here on a track. It's not too long with a lot of shortcuts. What shortcuts are we gonna see here? Okay, nothing so far. We're gonna see a big shortcut after the bat section on the right here. And it's just a wheelie and holding down, getting the right angle, making sure not to hit the wooden beams. Easier said than done. That is a shortcut that I do not like going for online, but you can master it. It is consistent if you know how to do it. You just have to evade the bats, get the right angle, use the mushroom at the right time. And it's very precise though, because even if you make it, you can so easily hit the wall and lose a lot of time. But you, you have to miss that post on the left by pixels in order to get the right angle. It's fascinating how it's not done with a TF input, it's not done with a jump, it's literally just a wheelie mushroom off the edge to pull it off. And then a trick on the last corner while holding down in order to land quick and get a tighter angle. So uh, holding down on a small ramp like that really helps make that last corner work. And we're probably gonna see the same strategy on the last ramp for lap three. And wow, that last shortcut was incredible. It landed super far to the right that time, perfection. And let's see how this ending looks right here so you hold down and then immediately wrap around your analog to the right to get as tight as possible very useful strategy on 200 cc for ramps that you land very quickly from because if you hold up then you'll start bouncing just because of the angle of your bike you can't get it to the right angle in time you fall so fast i mean this one is not going to be any different yeah 20 22 7 28 okay so this one's really old this might be the oldest one we've watched so far and I don't think we're ever gonna see much of a strat change on this track. It is interesting though, I forgot about that, how the best way to do the shortcut is to not use the mushroom in the staircase section, which is off-road, but to use it after when you don't trick, like that whole thing is wild to me. I'm surprised it's not better to trick and just use the mushroom on the last straightaway right here. That perplexes me, that's really shocking, honestly. And if you notice, the air from the staircase is actually utilized to go over the circular portion where the daisy statue is, or is it a Luigi? It's a Luigi daisy statue, yeah. Cause they clear that like out of bounds section slightly, like right here. So wheelie early and then go over the left there so you can land and immediately mushroom and get around the second part of the figure eight. So it's a very clever strat. I'm just surprised it's faster. I, I thought, you know, the mushroom should be used here. Like maybe one lap use it there and then use it lap two and three on the straightaway and then like get a slip drift off the curb into the first right corner, something like that. Lap three was incredible, 0.6. Lap two is where the most time could be saved. Lap one is always a little bit slower for the most part, just because there's a glitch. Is this the same one? I'm so confused. Okay, I'm not sure why Daisy Circuit showed up twice, but it doesn't matter. Check this out, Mistigan beating the world record by how much? 29.9 seconds. This is the most absurd one yet. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, we're gonna see two of these. Wait, two mushrooms were used to pull off the shortcut, landing in the pie. This is one of the coolest ultra shortcuts I've ever seen. Wow, and then this ending, okay, that's really wide, but maybe there's some shenanigans in place right here. What a weird angle, what a, what? What, you can do it with one mushroom? Respawn? No, oh, one mushroom, unbelievable. Okay, now this makes sense. This is mind blowing. One mushroom, that angle was absurd. There was a lot of turning while the mushroom was being used. And I think there was even some bouncing that happened because we saw Mistigan reverse and then wheelie in the mushroom and the mock bike bounced a bit, plus turning left. I think that gave some extra air, making the shortcut possible with only one mushroom because they landed in relatively the same spot despite two mushrooms versus one being used. I never expected this to be possible with one mushroom and this really explains 29.9 20, seconds saved. Mind blowing. I think Michigan's probably the only person to ever make this twice in a run. Such a cool ultra. I wonder how difficult the ultra shortcut is. I still wanna potentially do that video idea where we get 24 players online on 200cc and do ultra shortcuts, and you have to do the ultra shortcut because the Koopa Cape shortcut on 150cc, it's never gonna happen. Like, it's it's just so, so tough to get. And 
no one's gonna be pulling that off online in any capacity, but that one looks easier because it's just a pull clip as opposed to having to like ride the edge on the left side half in bounds and then do the whole thing you guys know from the Koopa K150 glitch. So let's talk about this run here. I'm still, that was my favorite one, as you guys can probably guess, like it's gonna be hard to beat that one. Two Koopa Kid glitches, it's such a cool looking glitch also. But this is interesting because for the longest time on 200cc, Funky Kong had the world record on this track and here we are seeing 0.014 improvement. We're seeing the old school rock strategy where you delay trick and then hit the rock as your trick animation is happening and you fly down really fast. If you trick early there, then you'll get the full animation and then you'll hit the rock and you'll fall really slow. So you wanna make sure you delay your trick to do that strategy, but you have to drift into it. And it's one of the coolest like low trick strategies in the game. It's, it's, it's very reminiscent of the Waluigi Stadium invisible wall strategy where you bounce off of it. Like th this is not invisible wall, but it's using part of the scenery to make a low trick happen really really cool and that is completely useless on 150 cc for time trials considering just going off the side of the uh just just hitting the wall and drifting into it is faster but i don't think that works on 200 and even if it did you fall so fast with such a big speed boost here that it's probably just always going to be better to do it this way i actually want to learn this if, if you can get this consistently that's a huge time save because usually you kind of overshoot that section if you drift into it, you're gonna like land in the water at the end and then use the mushroom, but you, you, it takes forever to fall. Like that probably saves a second or two on its own. And lap three was perfection there. So that's a good strategy to learn. It's a little risky though. You fall off there on lap three, your whole race is done. All right, Maple Treeway three for three glitch. Love to see it. Oh my gosh. Wow. If only it worked like that on 150cc. Just skipping everything. Oh, that looks so cool. This glitch always confuses people anytime that it's in a video on my channel. People do not understand why you have to do this beginning part. Like, what's the point of it? And the reason why is because in Mario Kart Wii, if you skip the first key checkpoint, then you can go through any key checkpoint, and then at that point, you just have to go through the rest of them. It counts the lap. So you're skipping the first key checkpoint, and then you're doing that ridiculous backwards shortcut which puts you at the end of the level and then you're hitting the last key checkpoint, ultimately finishing the lap super quick. And the lap one strategy was insane. I wonder if that can be done on lap two and three because that would be faster than having to go behind the hut and use the mushroom in the off-road. Just doing it in one foul swoop was so insane on lap one. I wonder how difficult it is. It's probably very tough because I was expecting to see that three for three. Really cool, Maple Treeway, 105.9, love to see it. All right, and lap two and three were practically the same there. I mean, lap one is always gonna be way slower having to go backwards. So now we're gonna see Maple Treeway, no glitch. And this one is the same from 2021. This is the oldest world record yet. This is by Radar. And I used the time trial of this way back in 2019, 2020. I had the record here back in the day. I'm curious to see like how much faster this time is than my current time I got because uh, this was one of my favorite tracks, the time trial on 200cc. It's such an adrenaline rush. You feel like at any moment it could come to an end because the whole entire track is really bouncy and you're just boosting all the time. So I love this track in general. It doesn't matter what game mode or what category. Always one of my favorite tracks, the time trial and play online. And Nintendo clearly loves this track too. They brought it back in the last few Mario Kart games. Oh. It's gonna be a perfect run. Like, you know it's going to be the best run when it's lasted this long. Like, this is already unbelievably consistent. No wonder why this isn't beaten. We have to watch that again. Look at this. Can we just see how close? You can't even see Daisy. We got to go frame by frame here. Still can't see Daisy. Oh my gosh, look at that. And then look at this wiggler dodge with ease. I have hit that wiggler so many times when I used to time trial this. Now I know the secret to success. You have to risk it for the biscuit confirmed. And the mushroom strategy on this track is hilarious. The fact you just use it right there, comical, absolutely comical. And then that was a really bad last low trick because the end of the 
track has like a weird uphill and then neutral leveled out flat section where you can easily bounce and lose a lot of your trick boost if you land in an awkward spot of the track. So it was it was good damage control, but a little unfortunate there. That was the biggest mistake so far. Otherwise, a perfect run and extremely clean. I don't think the U-turn shortcut we see on 150cc no glitch will ever be used on 200cc time trials. I don't imagine it really saves anything considering how fast the boost panels are when you do the wraparound corner on 200. And once again, a little bounce right there. Didn't quite get the perfect low trick, but still 140.0 insane and lap three was half a second slower than lap two but i think this one could go down like a second or so at most and i don't know if it'll happen in a while i don't know if it'll be beaten in a while because the track is so hard to time trial 2022 so this one's been around a while and doing the uh the new school entry on 150cc i remember when that entry got found and I, I just like couldn't believe it. The world record on this track went down like three seconds. And I think Miyake still has the world record, like a player who had this world record back in like 2008, 2009. It's so cool for 150cc. And it's it's 18.9 here, but it's actually faster on 150cc because you can never go full speed on this level. So that's funny, it doesn't happen very often. 1.664. Haya, or Hia, however you want to pronounce this UK player's name, has a lot of amazing times just dismantling the old world records. Great low trick. Some break drifting. Spin drift in the opposite direction. And platform skip. Now we're going to see the right side rock hop. Oh, had to clip part of the rock to make it work. And overall, an insane lap. Okay, so... I'm expecting to see two of those, potentially three, but it's really cool because normally we see the rockless rock hop and now we're seeing the right side rock hop, like we do on the 150cc shortcut category. I always felt like this should count as no shortcut considering it doesn't skip any key checkpoints, even though it's a little glitchy. I, I, I never felt like this was the same level of shortcut category that the other tracks are in Mario Kart. Like, we already have the glitch category going around the rock. This should be the no glitch category. Three categories for tracks is always a little goofy. So two right side rock hops, one rockless rock hop. Amazing, skipping the ramps, great ending. Let's see how much slower lap three was, I'm curious. Wow, almost two seconds slower. It really shows how much time it saves to do right side rock hop. I can't imagine how hard it is on this game mode though to get that even once. And now we have more Grom Volcano. It's kind of funny. Some tracks have three categories, some have one. <laughs> like DK Summit only has one category despite that looking very glitchy. And then that Rock Hop is counted as a glitch, but the DK Summit one isn't. So now the shortcut is just gonna be probably at the very end of the level, I'm imagining. I'm curious where the mushrooms can be used. It's not here, it's gonna be oh, right here probably. No, no, it's gonna be on the right. It's gonna be on the right, yeah, okay. Is it gonna be there every single lap? Probably. That'd be a little underwhelming considering all the cool strats you can do with mushrooms on this one. But I mean, you're limited. You can't do too much when everything is a glitch on this track. The main thing I'm learning on this one is just how to approach the ending. I, I like what they're doing. They're going all the way to the left. They're getting less air. They're getting a lot of boost from their trick to be able to skip the first platform. It looks really consistent. And I usually just approach the platform section completely straight and then I have to fast fall and I really just pray that I don't fall off or land between the platforms, but this seems like a much better way to do it. Yeah, like that was consistent looking all three laps. I definitely want to learn that and put that into my gameplay with the mock bike. And yeah, same strategy all three laps. If the mushroom was used somewhere else, I wonder if the scenery rock in the middle between the two split pads at the end, I wonder if that would be used to do a high trick land up top and then skip through the middle, but there's no really other spot to use the mushroom. All right, 0 0.390 cut by Haya again. And this was another track I love time trialing. The shortcut at the beginning, never saw any play on 150cc time trials, but on 200cc, it shines. The ultra shortcut, I don't think will ever be used on 200. It's just, 
I and mean, we call it the ultra shortcut. You, you know what I mean, the three shroom shortcut. I, I just, I think it's just really awkward to pull off and you can't save as much. So instead doing this shroomless and then pretty much cutting the same amount with this shortcut just works even better. I wonder, yeah, because the problem is with the ultra is regardless you would need two mushrooms, but you can do essentially what's almost like the ultra shortcut three times with this lake cut, I mean. It's really surprising how much faster it is on 200 versus 150. I think another thing with that shortcut is you get so much air doing it, but on 200 CC with fast falling, it makes it worth it. While on 150 CC, you fly on the section for like five years. You don't land for forever. And then you have to land right where the pokey is and then the pokey screws you over while on this level, you just get to bypass the bridge entirely. And three for three wall glitch. Nobody is gonna beat this. This is one of the best records we've seen so far. Okay, okay, oh, oh! Okay, so there's a big mistake at the end. I spoke too soon. I'm curious to see what the time difference is on lap two and three here. Not bad, only 0.3. So a 0.3 time loss, maybe 0.5 time loss or so at the end. And still an insane run, one of the best ones. And that track is impossible to get the the turn skip three times. The uh, the, the wall glitch is just like way harder on 200 than it is on 150. They're not even tricking at all to pull it off because it's just more consistent to not trick. So I don't expect to see anything crazy here. I'm just shocked that this is a Daisy record and not a Funky Kong record. So maybe there's some crazy car dodging that happens that is gonna be impossible to do with Funky Kong. So far, the only thing I've seen that I can imagine Daisy being better than Funky Kong is the first U-turn on lap one cutting inside that car didn't look easy. That you could do with Funky Kong, no problem. On lap one, I could see it being a little bit tough with Funky, but how is this a daisy track? Surprise, this isn't a spear track, or a sneakster track for that matter. No, but I, it feels like it should be a flame runner track. I'm kind of shocked right now. Nice spin drift wheelie, and lap three just like that. 23 second last on Movie Highway, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm surprised. There's only one moment so far this entire run where I feel like Daisy really shines over Funky Kong. What's this turn look like? Okay, just beating out the blue car and then that part, not difficult to dodge yellow car. And that's it. Shocking. I did not feel like that was a Daisy track at all. Okay, I digress. Glitch. Category 1.885. This is our recent world record set in August last year. What is this going to look like? So this is going to be a track that I think has three categories as well. And I'm all for watching those. There's a lot of them on the Wii tracks, but for the retros, I don't think we'll have many at all. So we're seeing the shortcut down on the left side, shroomless. And now we're going to see the big shortcut done. Almost positive. Yes! Perfection. Through the window! Almost. Used all three mushrooms and was able to ricochet off the half pipe to the left and bypass the trick boost ramp and just cut that whole section. We're seeing three different glitches in one lap. Two laps. So good. So good. What does lap three look like? This is the coolest run so far. I mean, what's the finishing time going to be? You always want to do an opposite direction spin drift before the stairs to be able to skip all the stairs and get the right angle going into the next turn there. It's a very difficult section of the track. And we get to see it again. Oh, this is an incredible run. Complete masterclass gameplay here on all the shortcuts. None of them are free. None of them are like impossible, but that, that spiral skip shroomless on left side, like that's probably the hardest one actually, even harder than the big ultra shortcut. 15 second lap two. Ultra saves over 15 seconds. This is absurd. All right, so now we have the shortcut category. And this one is actually gonna be the exact same as before. I mean, you know, we, we've seen this one before, but this is just gonna be everything legal for online. No ultra. I'm expecting to see three for three left side. I can't remember what this record looks like. It's been a year. Three for three, and then probably the ending strategy done at least two for three. Let's see. Oh, so Mushroom is used very early, and then it's a nose dive to be able to get a bad landing on purpose to get a tighter angle. In Mario Kart Wii, you almost always want to get a smooth landing, landing on your back wheel or landing on your front wheel. 
but not fully. Like you, you kind of hold up and then right before you land, you let go of up and then you level out and you wheelie and that's a faster way to land, but a little more risky. You're risking a bad landing. While you almost never want to do what he's doing here, except for moments like this, where you just hold up all the way. Oh my gosh, that was sketch. But you just hold up all the way, you land and you immediately pivot. Just immediately pivot and then get your left drift out. It's only useful for shortcuts. You never see that on regular driving. Bad landings on purpose are quite funny to see. I mean, it, it, it looks so weird, but it, it actually does have a purpose, which is so cool. This game has a lot of tech. There, there, there's, there's a lot more than meets the eye in this game. That's what I realized. And we're gonna see it one more time. Yep, perfect bad landing. No off-road hit. Didn't need to get tricks off the pillars an absolutely incredible run and so consistent. All right, so now we have Shafamski. Shafamski. Uh, this is Haya again with a 0 .440 cut. Is Haya just the best 200cc player? That's what I'm starting to think. And this is a this is a big cut, so I'm really hyped to see this one. I don't know if there'll be any strat changes or if it's just going to be really clean driving. That wheelie was perfect. And then no trick there. I gotta remember that. No trick is better. Just wheeling off that into a slip drift is the way to go. And then... Cool. Just going straight. No mushroom until now. Yeah. And then, oh, an amazing low trick off the pillar. And then jumping before the ramp to be able to get less air to not hit the Bowser statue. And then a spin drift here. And just hitting the very edge of the boost ramp and not tricking, so you get less air. If, if you go off the ramp the, the full way, you, you get so much more air, but because he's kind of skipping the whole dip section, just having his back wheel clip the edge of the boost panel, it works out perfectly. Somehow did not hit the fire here. There's so much tech in these runs. You know, 150cc has way more tech than 200cc time trials, but 200cc time trials still has quite a bit of tech. It's just different. There's way less like chain drifting and there's a lot more like goofiness to it and jankness, but I, I love the jankness. Like it's very unorthodox what you see in these runs. Like the last one having the bad landing after the shortcut. This one purposely not going off the ramp to get a trick like and just hitting the back part of it with the, with the wheel. Like on 150cc you get a low trick off of that ramp before the Bowser statue part. So everything is very surprising here. And we're gonna see one mushroom use at the end with no trick, just just jumping instead, jumping. That was so weird. He, he, he jumped to be able to land on like the top part of the fire pillar and then just didn't trick at all because it was faster, like like fascinating. It makes sense though, because if you just wheelied off, you got a lot of air and you never want to get like excess air in this game unless you're doing a shortcut. Speaking of shortcuts and excess air, we have the moon jump on Rainbow Road. <laughs> Craziness. Hang on, I gotta go back. This is a 2.3 second cut. Okay, I'm, I'm hyped. I think this is the glitch category though, so that would make sense. All right, really nice. And then, oh, what was that? Oh, th these records have came a long way. I remember when we used to watch these and we would find three to four mistakes or like imperfections just, you know, there was there was clear things missing from the run. Like we would see a really cool strat on, on one lap and not see it the next two laps. But here I, we're seeing just pop off after pop off. None of these records are weak anymore. Every single one has loads of interesting strats. And here we are again, the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut. Probably only gonna be done one time at a match considering it took two mushrooms, yeah. I could see this being a three for three. I don't know if anyone's ever gonna get it. Looks like a very tough shortcut. That method though looks easier than 150cc. I'm surprised though that nobody is using the shooting star and finding a way to do it with one mushroom consistently. I could see this becoming a shooting star record that's a three for three glitch at some point. Or even two for three for that matter. All right. Coming to the end right here. And it's it's a big time cut. I mean, I'd imagine probably the part of the run that saved the most time was gonna be that low trick on lap one after the the figure eight skip <laughs> speed. And the other part is gonna be aligning for the shortcut, doing the glitch really fast. All right, so now we have Funky Kong. 
It's gonna look a lot different now. I actually really enjoy playing this with Funky Kong. The hardest part is this. I always get not enough air here. And sometimes it doesn't go very well, but... Maybe I just gotta take it at a different angle, because... Hiya! Cleared it. No problem. Wasn't even close to failing it. And that was absurd. I would never risk that online. I mean... Just, just the whole entire anti-gravity corner, like, the easiest way to do it is just to drift to the right, up it, get major air, and land in the middle. When you're drifting left off of it, like, even if you get the drift, sometimes you don't make it because it's such a tight angle. Alright, we're not seeing any crazy low trick shenanigans like we did before. Consistent, clean, nothing jaw-dropping, except for this, of course. That's just, like, hard enough with Daisy, let alone Funky Kong. Then here, just making sure to hit the last boost panel. Oh, and no Moon Jump. Okay. It's going to be a hard left drift. Yeah, a little bit of a bad landing to get a tighter angle on purpose once again. Really useful, I can imagine, with Funky Kong, which has way less drift than Daisy. And, oh, cleared that one by less, but still really clean. That was a lot tighter than previous lap, and we're going to see how this one looks. This is insane. That That is going to be so hard to beat. You got to get that three times. I thought the wall glitch on Dry Dry Ruins was difficult. And yeah, before he drifts to the right, at the very last corner of every lap, he jumps to land on the boost panel so he doesn't accidentally wheelie or drift over it. He jumps onto it to ensure he hits it. We have King Alex with the glitch. This is from... 2019. This record happened one month after the game mode released by Mr. Bean. King Alex got this record and nobody has beaten it. I mean, he is really good at Peach Beach Glitch and King Alex is just a glitch master in general. He always finds ways to make glitches happen that nobody expects to be possible like he did recently. He got the 200cc ending glitch on Bowser's Castle, he got it on 150cc recently on his channel and he got the fast lap world record, which means the best time ever done on Bowser's Castle in just one lap. And I can see why this one hasn't been beaten in five years. I mean, this is by far the oldest world record, I have no doubt. Even though the last corner is scuffed, you gotta get the Peach Beach glitch twice on 200 and I'd imagine it's probably harder to get that glitch on 200 than 150. So an incredible 42.701 second run. And now we have Casey. This record is from 2022. And for those of you who don't know, Casey has the world record on Luigi Circuit on 150cc. And I believe maybe Peach Beach as well, maybe another track, but I know that Casey dominates with the spear and this essentially plays like a spear track when you're using the flame runner on 200 cc very very similar style so only one mushroom used so we're gonna see two mushrooms used on lap three so a zero one two strat here don't see that very often usually we only see mushrooms being dispersed weirdly between laps on shortcut tracks but I'm guessing two mushrooms right here. Oh, into the deep end, and then, oh my gosh, managed to not get any air. Jumped before the leveled out cobblestone path and managed to just land on top and get a main turbo. That was so smooth. All right. This is just gonna be pretty much the same as always. I mean, it is a time cut of 0.071, which is a lot on Yoshi Falls. There's nothing on this track. This is, one of my least favorite tracks on any game mode. It just doesn't really have much. It's also really bouncy and has awkward bullet bill lines, awkward item routes, everything about this track. It almost seems like they're cutting a little bit after the waterfall with the, the bounce from the mushroom as they leave the first waterfall. Let me see how it looks on lap three. By the way, this player is by far the best 200cc player. Haya has gotten like 10 world records. At this point, we're not even, we're only halfway through the video. I might even be underselling it. It might be more than 10. 39.9, wow. And just like that, we're gonna be on Ghost Valley 2. This is normal. We might not have a glitch category on this track. I'm not sure. Let's see. Cause like, if you do the glitch, like how much does that really save? I don't know if this would save anything cause you couldn't do that shortcut where you do it without tricking, getting super low air. Like you can wrap around this first corner in two seconds as opposed to 150cc, it probably takes four seconds to get around the first two corners. And 
you know, it's 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 just like it's it's an ultra shortcut, but it barely saves anything, and you're gonna lose time not being able to do this shortcut. So I don't think there is a glitch category on this track. I think it's just one category, which you don't really see very often, where the glitch category is slower than the no glitch category on 200 versus 150. So. I think we're going to Mario Raceway. Yeah, we're going to Mario Raceway. We got Radar here, and this is from 2021. I think that, yeah, this one just has one category as well. On 400cc, you could skip the entirety of the track and land at the end almost. I really love that strat. I don't think that's ever gonna be possible on 200cc, but if someone finds a way to do it, then we might see a big time cut on this track. That would be so cool. I wonder if it's possible. I feel like it could be. 200cc is pretty cracked. You could probably find a way with some weird vehicle. I don't know though. Maybe the Flame Runner or something. And we're gonna be seeing a very consistent run here. And the ramp, no purpose. If it had a booster on it, we would see it being used, but not here. And nothing too crazy with the strat, just, just a, a regular shortcut, not going inside the Prana Plant or anything like that. This track has actually had Daisy World Records on 150cc by mushrooming early right here and going inside that Prana on the right. But it's, it's a very standard strat here. and There's nothing crazy. I mean, I'm kind of surprised. I really thought the strategy would be to do the giant hill shortcut and get a wheelie off of it and skip everything. It's just very inconsistent. I thought that would be the way to go, but... That was the most basic world record we've seen, and it does have a big shortcut on that track. It just wasn't used like it was on previous world records. All right, Sherbet Land glitch. 0 0.730 time save. We're gonna see at least two glitches, right? Shroomless, shroomless. Okay, I wonder how difficult this glitch is on 200. The fact we're seeing it multiple times, shroomless? makes me believe it's easier on 200 than 150, which is awesome. This is, this is so cool. I, I can't believe it. Shroomless every single time. And it doesn't even look like they're hitting the post. The hitbox of the Magic Cruiser must be so weird and wide that they're able to like clip it with just a pixel of the left side of it, despite not even being near it visually. Okay, so we had Toadette for glitch and we're getting Baby Daisy Magic Cruiser for no glitch. Weird. But Baby Daisy has more speed and May Turbo. Toadette still has a speed bonus, but has an off-road bonus instead. It's just kind of funny because you're having to drive more off-road on the no glitch record. So I thought we would see Baby Daisy used for glitch and Toadette used for no glitch. And the complete opposite happened. I'm just completely surprised all the time while commentating this like it's actually such a treat to do these and i want to thank you guys for asking me last year to make another 200 cc reaction world record video because i did not make one in 2022 and i had made one prior years like 2019 2020 2021 i believe we did one last year for 2023 because you guys wanted me to bring it back and it's just really exciting to see how much these tracks have improved, how good the world records look, the strategy changes, all the developments. I think 200cc time trials has a long way to go. And as long as people keep playing it, we're gonna keep making these videos every single year and just celebrate, you know, this this incredible game mode that Mr. Bean made. It has fast falling, it has brake drifting, it feels so smooth and just made for Mario Kart Wii. It almost feels like it's built into the game. I like forget it's a mod sometimes. And the fact that Mr. Bean added 200cc time trial leaderboards plus online ghost database for this game mode is incredible. And I hope one day there's also like a way to play online that involves worldwide lobbies and not just uh, playing fun rooms. But I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know if there's enough interest to play this game mode online. I just love 200cc. So here we go. Umbrella clip, <laughs> nice, I love this one. I used to have the record on this track back in the day doing the umbrella clip, one of my favorite strategies. A nice, a really nice break drift there to manage to get around. And I'm imagining, oh, oh, we're gonna see another glitch. This one's gonna be a respawn, I'd imagine. Yeah, okay, so that's awesome. We get two Shy Guy Beach glitches. And now what you have to do is you just have to back up to where the water line is. It's very easy to remember it because the visual indicator. 
and then just a regular regular lap, lap. so I mean lap one is gonna be way faster than lap two and lap two is gonna be way faster than lap three and it's really cool to see a dolphin dasher world record I'm kind of surprised it's not Magic Cruiser. I'd imagine it's probably easier with Dolphin Dasher to make the shortcut. Also, interesting, we didn't see a hop over the water there. We didn't see a low trick. I think this record could definitely go down to 51 seconds, maybe even 50. And look at that, three second difference between each lap. It's super weird looking at that. All right, we have Fantasy beating the world record by 0 0.010, not even a frame. This one, I played this one quite a bit right when the game mode came out. It was it was fun on uh, time trials. I I really enjoy this one with Magic Cruiser. It's nice to see the record is with Magic Cruiser because on 150cc, it used to be a Magic Cruiser track for the longest time, and then it was like five years after the game was out, it became a spear track, and it stayed a spear track for a long time after that. Now it's clearly a spear track. I think it's slower by almost a second using the Magic Cruiser, maybe half a second. But I missed the Magic Cruiser ways, just ignoring the track, hanging out in the water, and using a vehicle that really doesn't get to shine very much on such a goofy, one-of-a-kind track. Shy Guy Beach is one of the weirdest tracks Nintendo's ever made. Just the enemies are difficult, the actual road is weird, like, I mean, it's so wide, but then a lot of times taking the road, like, the wide parts of the road is, is just not faster. You have to find weird strategies to navigate through it. Like you have to hop so many times on the mound section. Even the very beginning has a section you have to hop over water. So automatic is terrible on Shy Guy Beach. It's just such a weird track. It's one of the weirdest tracks Nintendo's ever made in any game ever. And that's saying something because there's a lot of weird Mario Kart tracks. Delfino's gonna be fun. I'm always enjoying this track. I did not see how much this beat the previous year world record by. We're gonna be seeing some one mushroom double shortcuts every single lap, of course. And this shortcut is way harder to do on 200 than 150 because of the second part of it. Like you have to not hit the wall and not fall off. So you have to get a super tight angle. This will always be a mock bike track. There's no way it'll ever be Flame Runner. The corners in here are tough enough, but the double shortcut I think is the main reason why we won't see it ever switch. Let's see how these shortcuts look. I'm imagining this one's gonna be really clean. And yeah, they turn slightly to the left and then they rehop to the right to get a tighter angle instead of just holding one drift or neutralizing and drifting right again late. It's, it's, it's very early you see that right drift start in the, the, mud, the mud section. The lap two bridge was really good. I forgot to comment on that. This, like, I don't know how he was able to stick like that. Let's see how the lap three bridge looks. Oh, it's gonna be straight up. We're gonna go to the right. Yeah, right through the tree. Love it. Perfect alignment. Skipping the grass. Oh no, got a stick there. I don't know if that was faster to get a stick, but 122.434. And lap three was a lot slower than lap two. And lap one and two were practically the same. So may maybe this one can go down to 121. It's, it's just gonna be hard though, cause you know, the bridge is so much higher on lap three. So I don't know like if there's a way to get to the bridge faster and then potentially have it lower and then the time save will compound. So we're seeing Waluigi stadium backwards. Oh, this is fascinating. Okay. So it's gonna be a three for three, similar to what we saw on Maple Treeway. It's, it's really surprising to me that that's faster because it's not like this ultra cuts nearly as much as, as the 150cc one, and they still went backwards. I'm, so, I'm really surprised going backwards is still faster for the shortcut. It's still so cool. I think this one looks just as cool, if not even better than the 150cc one. Like, bouncing off the top of the sign, like the properties of this make no sense. Like, why do you shoot that high? This, this game is so weird. It's so glitchy, and I love it for that reason. Everything just functions so differently. You never know what you're gonna get. It's just Mario Kart Wii Physics for the win. That's the only way to describe it. And a little bit of high air here. I don't know how avoidable that is, but we have a sub one minute on Waluigi Stadium glitch. And now we get to watch no glitch. Oh, this is from Falco. This is from over a year ago. Okay. So last time we watched this, it was pretty much a brand new world record. And then now we just get to watch it again. I mean, this track is just incredible underappreciated by casuals just 
amazing for Mario Kart Wii. It is better on Mario Kart Wii than it is in Double Dash. And it's really good in 8 Deluxe also, but in Mario Kart Wii, like, it just shines. There's so much tech everywhere. Okay, a nice jump trick. Man should not hit the fire, barely. And this part's funny, because that's usually a pretty difficult corner on 150. You have to get so much air and kind of wrap around that U-turn partially. But on 200, you just like skip the boost panel altogether. And then here, this is a very difficult strat to learn on 150 and on 200. Not easy, but still um, easier, I would say. And on top of that, I mean, the way to do it on 200cc, if you want to not be going for a time travel record, but just want to be consistent online, is just to kind of wait a little bit before, like, like right here, what you do is you would maybe get one less trick boost and just ensure you make it. He's going off the very last part of the zipper to make that happen, to cut the maximum out. But if you only got two zipper boosts before it, it's a lot easier to get trimless as opposed to getting three zipper boosts and get the turn skip all in one foul swoop. Okay, this one does not have, this one does not have a glitch category apparently. There's a lot of glitchy things you can do on this track. You can like with, without a doubt, like do the full play cut shroomless but or, or with a mushroom and and skip skip the off-road but i think that yeah th this is just too busted even if you did the leg cut three times and you wheelied over the first u-turn where the off-road is i don't think that would be faster than just doing this so despite this track having a big shortcut right there on the right you can skip this whole turn but it would take at least one mushroom and put you in a weird spot so you'd have to use another mushroom but this is just too busted for a track that has two glitches, neither one is being used. The shortcut is faster than the glitches. The intended Nintendo shortcut is the way to go. And it surprises me, honestly. There's no, no way to make it work. Surprise is not a magic to track. You do this giant shortcut on the right three times, wheelie over the off-road, but it does make sense. It is the thickest off-road in the game, so the off-road based vehicles don't really get to capitalize too much, even though there's so much off-road. All right, the last corner was a little bit too far to the right. Ended up being kind of, just kind, kind of a slow finish, but got the meter out and only lost like 0.1 something to lap two. So this is by J Cool, and I believe this is the shortcut category. I didn't see. Oh, nice, so fast, so clean. I am so happy to see the old school. BC3 shortcut being used on 200cc world records. That was from like the very beginning of time itself in the Mario Kart Wii realm. It took no time at all for the ultra shortcut to be implemented. It was back in 2008 and the original shortcut is just so satisfying to watch though. It's also much easier so you can do it consistently. But what he's doing is before the last platform, as he is going off the jump ramp, he is jumping early and drifting, not getting a trick to slow himself down. If he jumped even a fraction of a second later, he would get a low trick and his angle would not be right for being able to go into the shortcut. Let's watch it one more time. This is really technical here. Nice chain drift, low trick, low trick, low jump without trick, and then jump early drift. It just puts him in the perfect alignment to be able to release the drift, turn to the left, mushroom, the rest is history. Incredible run. You don't even have to jump over the little square lava sections at the end. On 150cc, you have to jump or you will die. So 27.8 lap two. This one can go down to 123, but still, I mean, it's practically, it's, 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 it's a tough shortcut to be able to get three times at that speed. And it's all about how fast you can do the shortcut. You can't waste any time on it. And you know, over half of these tracks have some, like at least like one ridiculous strat that you have to pull off three times in a row. So now we have the no glitch run. Are we gonna see a turn skip here? I don't think so, maybe. No, a nice spin drift to evade the swamp, the thwomps and, and the boost ramp. I mean, wow, we're not gonna be, see the ramp used. That's kind of sad. I was hoping to see the shortcut. We'll see, we'll see how lap two looks.
I'm not seeing anything uh, too crazy on this one, surprisingly. Even a lot of the corners are very safe. Five for five little tricks both times, 10 for 10 so far, that's impressive. And this spin drift is nice. I wonder if that's a strat change. I always thought the ramp was used, but I guess not. I think what it is too, is like to make the shortcut faster, you have to mushroom and then it's just better to use the mushroom elsewhere. So if you're playing online, you have three mushrooms, it's not bad to do the turn skip with the mushroom and then use the mushroom after to cut that little bit of off-road. But in this instance, it's just not worth it to use the mushroom when you can't use another one right after. 15 for 15 low trick. I think that's one of the key parts about the run is being able to get the low tricks perfectly. And yeah, really? standard for a flat track should be a standard run but bc3 always has so many shenanigans so i'm really surprised to see it being so just so like normal all right we have a glitch run netherlands 0.529 time save with the quacker oh yeah this i forgot about this i was like what are they doing i was like why aren't they going backwards but watch this so that looks like a mistake, but what happens is you gotta make sure you get that checkpoint. And it's really weird because what's happening here is they are going through the first key checkpoint, which means they have to go through all of them. But because right there, this is so weird about the track, but if you go up against the wall there, you actually going through the first key checkpoint again backwards. So when you go through the first key checkpoint backwards, but then you don't go through the finish line backwards, then you can go through the last key checkpoint and it works out. That is what's happening. He's actually going through the first key checkpoint backwards because the finish line and the first key checkpoint extend a little bit too far. And that's just hilarious how that even works like that on Parkway. Like what an oversight by Nintendo. I love it though, because that crazy lake cut ends up being possible and faster. But people watching that and are not aware of the key checkpoints, they're just gonna be like, wow, like what a mistake. How are they ending up in the off-road at the end in the tunnel section every single lap? Absolutely wild. And now we have the classic spiral skip that is banned online because you go through a key checkpoint backwards. Still very cool. I don't think we're gonna see anything else too crazy here. But this track is, it's tough on 200 CC. It's not easy on 150 either, but you could just get thrown out of control because the sloping from the main road, which is very slidey, to the off-road is pretty extreme compared to other tracks. Oh, that was insanely well done. Even lined up perfectly for the first corner. And that's fascinating. I'm surprised this is faster. I'm, I'm very surprised a standstill main turbo isn't used because he's only getting like half of the mushroom boost, maybe not even that. It's like, you'd expect maybe the mushroom to be used early on the spiral skip, to clear the spiral skip early than, than doing sense to main turbo, or maybe just using the mushroom somewhere else entirely different, like finding a way to make it faster on the cave section at the end of the level. How is it faster to use the mushroom there? It's, fa it's fascinating, guys. It's truly fascinating. Like, if you save the mushroom, you can use it at the end, and there's gotta be a way to hit the wall and keep some of your trick boost and ricochet and cut it inside. Like if you watch the 150cc no glitch world record on this track, they managed to cut everything on this U-turn here. They mushroom super early, they hit the wall at the end, and then the rest of their mushroom boost, they're able to level out and go into the finish line without having any air. It's so clean. This is a weird one. I think this track can go down a lot. I think there's potential strat changes that can make this uh, just a totally different run. I don't know, could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. All right, so now we got a very standard run. Let's see where the mushroom is used when the spiral skip is not in place. I'm imagining it's gonna be last corner, but I've, I'm at the point now where nothing will surprise me. Okay, nice turn skip there. We weren't seeing that in the shortcut run. I don't think we're gonna have any other tracks that have three categories. I'm pretty sure DK Mountain. Oh! Two mushrooms used on lap one. But yes, see, why, why is that not faster to do that with the spiral skips as opposed to use the mushroom and burn two thirds of the mushroom into the cannon? 
I'm very surprised. And then the previous record wasn't doing this corner skip either. They were going a lot wider. So that category has a, some room for improvement. This one, this run looks really good. How is the last mushroom gonna be used though? Considering two were burned on lap one. Still holding it. Wow, okay, so we still have one mushroom. Where is this gonna be used? I don't know. Some brake drifting before the cannon, okay. And they always jump instead of just holding a drift after the cannon, the 150cc is the same way. Oh, it looked like a mushroom, uh, main trouble miss right there. But uh, you get a slightly faster angle if you jump drift right after the cannon. That was discovered really late in Mario Kart's history. Okay, lots of brake drifting. That last corner can be improved, but I can't imagine how hard it is even to make it to the last corner in this run. It's a very long time trial run for 200cc. You don't see many of them that are a minute 39 seconds long. I don't think this is a glitch category. I didn't see, but oh, that is a very clever strategy. This is one of the most awkward tracks to play for speed mods. I really dislike this one. It's one of my least favorite tracks. I don't, I don't dislike it nearly as much on 150cc, but on 400, 999, even 200cc, it just feels really unnatural. But look at the strategy here. Wheelie, jump, spin drift, clear most of the off-road, fixed angle, left drift plus mushroom, no walls need to be hit, no trudging through the off-road. Everything was just perfection. Even getting that high trick there seemed faster. Get a skip a little bit of the off-road. All right, let's see it again. Yeah, that's an incredible strategy. It looks very difficult because if you don't time the jump perfectly, you're just gonna end up in the grass immediately and then you have to decide if you're gonna like go through the grass for five seconds or just use your mushroom early and probably hit the wall. Okay, so a little bit of off-road hit there and a missed low trick at the end. So this run has a lot to be improved at the very end because the trick boost is just thrown into lap four there. You do not wanna miss lap three trick boost. I think lap three should be like 21.5 or something. All right. We got, oh, a 0.296 cut on Mario Circuit 3. Are you kidding me? That's an insane cut for the simplest track in the game. A track with no ramps, no shortcuts that go over any gaps. Completely flat. I mean, it doesn't get simpler than Mario Circuit 3. There's nothing to this track. How did someone cut 0.296? Oh, clever. That's how. Okay. So I think it's gonna look the same every lap. But seriously, that is fascinating. I never expected the hole in the wall shortcut to be faster. And they're not even jumping before the off-road, before using the mushroom. They're just using the mushroom while wheeling into the dirt to go between the hole. This is fascinating. I thought they would have to jump and then mushroom wheelie in order to clear this, but they're able to clear it perfectly and then get the main trouble into the boost panel. I never expected to see 0.1 cut every single lap on Mario Circuit 3 in 2024. That was, that was something else. That was one of the most surprising strat changes because it makes sense. The regular 150cc shrimp spot, it just doesn't work on 200cc. It shoots you way too far to the side and it cuts way less. So it's cool to see the Nintendo like hole in the wall shortcut that we never see used in anything but online actually used in time trials for like the first time ever on that track. This one, we might see something at the end with the ramps, but I feel like it's gonna be pretty standard. Let's see. Yeah, just a lot of chain drifts. It's really satisfying to watch. I mean, the chain drifting is a little bit easier on 200cc and it's cool to see the Flame Runner having the record here. The hedge section is really clever. Chain drift into chain drift and then going around to the left and then chain drift into wheelie. And some nice slip drifts, some chain drifts. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, so smooth. Perfect chain drifts. And this is a funny part too, like always hopping over that little bit of water every lap. It looks like a really fun track to time trial on 200. Like out of all the tracks we've seen so far, this looks like a top five track to time trial in the game mode. And then getting to cut so much of the flower bed. 
It's so satisfying. So satisfying. You just gotta throw a wheelie between each drift change. And then only like one wheel leaves the ground and you slide and you get your mini turbos super fast. It is an essential strategy for Mario Kart on 150cc and not as purposeful on 200, but definitely for time trials at least. You don't need to do that on 200cc online. Okay, we have Spitfire. This is from 2020. I've seen this record multiple times. Spitfire had the world record on 150cc as well. So it's really cool to see. He still has the 200cc world record on this track. We can skip the cannon. I should be skipping the cannon. Oh, I skip way too much. Okay. Managed to actually pull that off very smoothly. This is the bumpiest track in the game. This is a disaster of a track, honestly. Like Nintendo went crazy with this track. I cannot believe it. You know, I was talking about Shy Guy Beach being ridiculous. DK Mountain in Mario Kart Wii is ridiculous. They really polished it on 8 Deluxe. It's a lot smoother now, it makes more sense, it's wider, the turns actually work. On Mario Kart Wii, the U-turn section is impossible for 70% of the vehicles in the game. This, this first turn out of the cannon is a bumpy mess. You have to get the wheelie out so you can land on this downhill portion to not bounce like crazy. And the glitch goes without saying. It's just absurd. And then this shortcut that's intended is one of the wildest shortcuts they've ever put to actually be intended in any of their tracks. Like Mushroom Gorge Gap Jump, very surprising. They even put that in a track, but this DK Mountain one is weird because you gotta do the 2008 method going up the side or you gotta break a lot to pull off a shortcut. Like when does Nintendo ever put in a shortcut where you have to break to pull it off or like go up the side and then shoot off to the right. It's, it's just very unlike Nintendo. And I'm not surprised that they changed the shortcut and nerfed it considerably on 8 Deluxe. All right. Oh, very clutch, releasing that mini turbo halfway up the slope to get back to the main route there. And it's a really consistent run. It's a really impressive run. I'm not surprised this one's been around for forever. All right, we got King Alex. This is from 2022, and we have the no shortcut run. We had King Alex on Peach Beach, and we're seeing him again here. I don't know if he had any others. All right. Gotta remember to skip the cannons. I'm curious to see how this one compares in consistency to the glitch category. It's probably gonna be very similar. It's, oh yes, I forgot about this. Let's go. Oh, that's the coolest shortcut, yeah. I showcased that on my shortcut montage for 200cc way back. I made two shortcut montages. The first one is my most viewed video at the time of uploading this. And then I made one that I put way more effort into and showcased way more cool shortcuts like that one. And the short the shortcut video got like one tenth or one twentieth the amount of views. But I still, uh, you know, I'm happy I made a second shortcut montage show showcasing all the 200cc cuts. I mean, I could theoretically make a third one for 200cc. However, most of the shortcuts that have been found in the last three or four years are whoops didn't mean to do that are glitches they're ultra shortcuts and i don't really showcase ultra shortcuts too much in my shortcut montages i like to make shortcut montages to teach people how to you know uh play better online and utilize more crazy strats online generally but i did showcase a lot of ultra shortcuts when i made the 99999 cc <laughs> shortcut montage of course but for the most part you know the regular shortcuts are more my style and uh, yeah, lap three was the best one. Lap two, he hit a lot of fence, barely made it. Lap three was something else. Look at lap three's time. Dismantled lap two and one, and lap two and one were also very impressive. Nobody is beating that. All right, we have a glitch by Haya. 1.376 time cut. And are we gonna see two glitches? Two mushrooms, three mushrooms. Oh, okay, no respawn. I think we've seen that before. And it's important to, to hold up when you go into the wall there as you're entering the lava. If you hold up, your, your bike is slightly tilted down and you will stick to the wall as you fall. If you just go neutral, you'll bounce off of it and then you'll ricochet into the lava and you'll be you'll be placed more forward and you won't respawn where you need to to be able to get the lap count. You'll have to go backwards and try again. So it's very important you hold up when doing that ultra and getting the respawn. Also, it's just really important to hold up when you're falling 
from Lakitu in general on a respawn on 200cc because you fast fall and you save more time. So we're going to see downward diagonal right probably and TF input to be able to clear it without a mushroom. So we're seeing one ultra shortcut and two regular shortcuts on this one. And then we get to watch the no glitch run and that'll put this video to an end. Be sure to like and subscribe. We are almost at 500,000. We're getting there. Probably going to be close to 490k at the time this video goes up. So that is the goal for this year. 500k, so on and so forth. And who knows, maybe a new Mario Kart game will get announced this year. That's what I'm really hoping for. And then we'll be playing Mario Kart Wii until then, for the most part. Lots of 200cc. Gonna definitely be doing more knockout tournaments with 12 players instead of 24 for 200cc. And obviously other speed mod videos as well. Hiya! 0.114 no glitch time save, okay. So has both world records on this track. Definitely the best 200cc player, no doubt. Had quite a few 200cc world records in the past, but has really taken it to whole new heights in 2023 and 2024. I think a couple of these world records were in 2024. So even though I'm, you know, pretty much reacting to mostly 2023 world records. It's nice that we have at least a couple 2024 ones. I wanted to make this video early into the year. This video just dropped on uh, this channel like like a week and a half ago or something. Okay, so we know what to expect here. This is another really fun track. I am ready to record the Invitational right after this. So it's uh, so satisfying to be able to watch all of this and to see the highest level of 200cc gameplay right before I'm about to <laughs> just go, go for it all online in the craziest 24 player knockout invitational. Hoping that watching all of these world records will guide me to victory and I picked up on a few important strategies that I can take advantage of for for the, you know, for the online gameplay. Although a lot of these strategies are very risky and I might not want to go for them online. It might be too risky to, to go for it. I end up losing a lot of time if something goes badly. Like uh, one thing I don't like going for is the Dry Dry Ruins wall glitch. That, that's something that you could easily fail that and go backwards and lose like 10 seconds. All right, this is it. Just two corners to go. And once again, I, I'm just gonna shout out the channel. Be sure to check the top of the description to stay up to date on all 200cc world records. I'm gonna pin the comment. I'm gonna put it in the description. 200cc CTGP records. Subscribe to them. They do an incredible job keeping the 200cc community up to date. And ladies and gentlemen, that is all. Thank you for making it to the end of this video and I will see you for 2025.